So today's episode is about controlling rabbits under outbuildings from start to finish. And I'm gonna be having a look at a way of setting up a mesh exclusion around the base of the building once I've controlled the rabbits that's easily removable and doesn't get in the way of things like replacing bait in bait stations and spraying for termites. One of the big downfalls I've seen of most rabbit exclusions is that once they're put up, they're hard to take down. Hopefully this week's will be easy to take down when you want it to and will stay up for as long as you want. Don't forget guys, if you like this week's episode, please do hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and let's go control some rabbits. <laughs> Now before we start setting up the exclusion fence, I'm going to bait for rabbit control and I'm going to start shooting some rabbits and I'm going to try and reduce the population as much as possible before I trap them in underneath the outbuilding because I don't want a stinky mess underneath it and I don't want the fences that I put in the ground torn up by rabbits trying desperately to get out. So when I'm baiting the rabbits, I'm going to choose sites that are really active for the rabbits because rabbits are coprophic. They come back and they eat their own poo. What? To make sure we get as many rabbits as possible to take up our baits, what we're going to do is we're going to dig a nice trench in the earth because rabbits love the smell of fresh dug earth and are likely to come and investigate and dig. Have you ever noticed that when you plant a tree, they come straight away to the root zone? That's why. The next step in making sure we get as many rabbits onto our expensive bait as possible is to start out with some unbaited oats or a similar grain that the rabbits are going to be really attracted to and that is similar to the bait. That'll make them super confident. That'll get them all out of the burrows and coming feeding together as a community because when we start baiting, we want to get them all in the first go. Now it's been a couple of days and I can see clearly that the rabbits have been really active around this baiting site. It's time to start laying the bait, which costs the money. We're going to get effect now. Once you're confident that your baiting location's working and rabbits are visiting it, then it's time to splurge on your expensive grain-based bait. I will say, if you're going to be handling bait of any kind, doesn't matter if it's carrots, grain, whatever it is, make sure you're wearing PPE. Um, I know it's not tough, but neither's going to hospital with explosive diarrhea. All right, so now we just want to replace the oats with the grain-based bait. We're going to now monitor this baiting location and keep replacing the bait until it stops being taken, at which point I'm going to cover it back up. Make sure once you finish with your trench, you do cover up the baiting location. And always, if you're going to be using chemicals, get a chemical accreditation, get some training. It'll make you a lot safer. And these things come with signs to put out so the neighbours know what you're up to. Baited rabbits shouldn't be too dangerous to dogs and other wildlife because the poison does dissipate very rapidly. And also the rabbits are really small, meaning that if they get one or two, I wouldn't be panicking. But you want your neighbours to be aware of the fact that you have been baiting. Otherwise, they might get a little bit stroppy with you if they start finding dead rabbits all over their lawn. So the challenge for me with this design is to come up with some skirting net that goes into the ground and stops these burrowing animals from getting in underneath the outbuilding, but still allows me to easily and rapidly get access under the building to do my rat baiting and my spraying as I need to for termites. So the system that I'm going to build today requires a few things. We're going to use heavily galvanised netting. I'm using the White's heavily galvanised netting because I'm going to be burying it in the ground. There are cheaper options out there, lightly galvanised chicken wire, but they're not designed to bury in the ground and you'll be really disappointed if you choose the cheaper option. So go for the heavy galvanisation. I'm also going to be using these little handyman wire strainers because I want to be able to easily and quickly undo and do back up again the netting. And I'm also going to be using some Davos fencing clips to attach the guide wire and the netting to the 90 year old red gum stumps underneath this outbuilding. Because I don't fancy trying to get in underneath this building and hammer a staple into rock hard wood. Let's set it up and see how it looks. Now the first thing I need to do is dig a nice deep flat trench all the way around the outbuilding to bury the netting in when I've finished completing the fence. And this will also make access to the stumps underneath the outbuilding easier. 
Now the good part about doing this on a video is that you can speed this bit up because I don't really like digging. So the next thing I'm going to do now that I've got my trench established is run out a top save wire out of 3mm soft. Now the reason why I'm using 3mm soft wire is I want it to be able to be done up and taken apart on a semi-regular basis. So a high, high tensile wire is sort of counterproductive to that because it will weaken it. The other reason why I'm using a save wire at the top is people often make the mistake with chicken wire, they just run it out or mesh, they just run it out by itself and then they wonder why it sags and becomes daggy over time. It'll catch on your mower as you go past, it'll just be a mess. Just spend the extra couple of minutes and a couple of dollars running out some soft wire to be a top support. I'm going to tie that off at the other end and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this whole thing demountable using those nifty little wire strainers. Placing this strainer on the end that allows me to tighten the strainer in a clockwise fashion and untighten it in a counterclockwise fashion so that you never have to think about which direction you're spinning. We're just going to slide this onto the wire and use the shape of the bracket itself to form a very, very simple tie off that only takes a minute to do. Now, I'm not going to do this up all the way. I'm just going to secure it so that I can then start to run out the mesh and clip that to the wire. That's enough for now. Now the basic infrastructure is ready, we can roll out our netting along the trench. When I get to the other end, I'm going to cut this wire off about a mesh distance out from this wall here because I'm going to run another section down there they're going to overlap and I'm going to clip them together with wire clips at the end before I bury them. I'm using some Nipex cutters to make quick cuts through the twists on a join and I'm finding that these Nipex cutters are an absolute bonus for this sort of work. If you end up buying any tools that you've seen today these would be the ones to get. They just make working with this sort of mesh so much easier. Now that I've got my mesh laid out and I've got my spare bits at the end, all I need to do is connect the mesh to the top wire using my Jambro wire clippers all the way along. Now for this to remain adjustable, it's really important that you only attach the top save wire to the posts and not the netting itself. This allows the top save wire to be loosened and the whole netting to be pulled down at any time for access underneath the outbuilding. If you attach the netting as well, it'll stop it moving backwards and forwards and stop that adjustment potential. And now I just tighten up the top save wire, which will bring the netting up all the way along the wall then I can bend out my skirt and rebury it, job's done. Then I come along and I kick the netting in up underneath the posts, bending it, getting it ready for burial. And now comes time to bury the evidence and it's like we were never here. Notice dirt never goes back exactly the same as how you put it. So now I've got a nice, clean, neat and tidy rabbit exclusion underneath my outbuildings that I can mow right up to and know I'm not going to hit or get in the way of anything. And we've shut the gate on our rabbit problem. 
Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please do consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in the tools and equipment that I've used in the production of this rabbit exclusion, go to my website, timthompson.ag, and there's links to all of the products right there. Till next week, catch you later.